Hi and welcome to the Armageddon channel. My name is Stuart Garner and today we're going to be uh, running through some of the stuff we've been doing to the Jumbo. Uh, this is going to be done over the last two months though, so it may look a little bit disjointed. But as you can imagine, some days we'll only, uh, we'll only weld up one hole, but it'll take us all day to do it. So we're trying to make it a little bit more interesting, so we'll put it, uh, put it all together for you. You see here, we've started to repair it. Still got some of the penetration holes, but uh, we are starting to fill those in. This back half has already been done and ground back, although we still have a bit more welding and grinding here to do, we've still got to get rid of a lot of these little wel welts. Here we have the back, we've already ground and uh, sorted this side out. You can see it's still a bit rough in odd places, but that's because they have a uh, track um, carrier here for your spare links of track. So basically when we've, uh, when we've made them, we'll rub this down again and weld them on. So that's why it's a little bit rougher there. But the rest of it's looking pretty good. This side here was nearly as bad as the far side. No penetrating marks, but there was a lot of dinks in it. Um, so what we've done is we've welded them up, ground it back, and uh, then we've given it a coat of red oxide, very thick, to uh, fill any small blemishes. We've left the odd dink in it here, we're going to leave some on the other side as well, just to show what it, um, some of its former life. And then as you come along, this panel here, we had to cut this off completely. You can see the thickness just here, there was an outer panel on, but it was that badly damaged, there was no way we could, uh, we could repair it. So what we've done is we've cut it off and we are actually going to replace this piece here. Here we have some of the bits that we've already cut out. Uh, that's off the front just by the uh, driver behind the driver's head. This is along the top and then this is by the, near the turret. And you can see how much damage there is. Not repairable, so we've had to, uh, we are going to have to replace it. But just look at the thickness of steel. This piece here we're going to reuse. and um, This one is not badly damaged, so we'll repair it and reuse it. And this is where those panels came from. One of those uh, big chunks was cut out from here. Another piece here, and then another piece up here. That's where the, uh, the pieces we're going to reuse. So all of this is going to be replaced, and is already nearly ready to have the new stuff welded in. Another part of the damage, the sponsons. These are called the sponsons here. Basically, this was sits above the track. Uh, this had, front section had been completely blown out and destroyed, and then we've cut out these other sections. So this has all got to be replaced as you can see, this is a sponson that we've not yet taken out, but you can see the amount of damage that's in there. So we have to cut that all out and, uh, and that'll be replaced. I spent a lot of time welding and grinding and welding and grinding, but uh, it's a completely different beast now. We've still got the armour on the top to sort out, there's a few holes up there. We have got some steel coming for this, hopefully this week, and uh, we've already done the sponson for this one under here. So uh, she has changed massively. We're going through the uh, list of parts that we've got to uh, still find for her. Um, but to be fair, most of the bits we have either got or have got coming. We've also done the work on the gun, the 75mm gun. That's uh, been made working again. We've managed to get the breech block sliding up and down. So we've cut the welds out and that's now sorted. I'll show you that in a second. And uh, we've also got the, uh, the GAA engine, which is on the other side of the old girl. And um, she's pretty well good, we think she'll be alright. We've had her turning over by hand, but we haven't tried putting the starter motor on her yet, so hopefully uh, I'll show you that in a minute with Tim. Here she is, the Ford GAA engine, about 500 horsepower, and here is the man who is going to get it all running for us, this is Tim, and how are we getting on with it? Well, after we've turned it over by hand, and that seemed to go quite nicely, I thought we'll take the plugs out and have a look inside. And they Considering they've been in there for, well, we don't know how many years, but quite a few, are in pretty good nick. So all I want to do now is the starter motor on it, see if it'll turn it over. And cheat a bit, as we've not got the batteries. So that's good then. That sounds pretty good. And the oil pressure actually moved. Has it? Yep. Oh, so Even better. So you've got oil pressure, compression, just the magnetos to check over for sparks. And in theory, with a bit of fuel, it should fire up. And these are brand new carburetors. Brand new, new old stock carbs. Still got all the um, blanking on this one. I've not took that one out, I've stripped it yet to have a look inside it. But that one's been took out to have a look. Still all wired up as Still we came out of the factory. So uh, this is actually one of the biggest chunks of our vehicle <laughs> and uh, it's a lot better engine than the radial because these are a lot less prone to catching fire 
um, and, and a fair bit more power. Because the Sherman Jumbo was, what, eight or ten tons of it uh, heavier than a standard Sherman, needed a fair old lump to, uh, to drag her around. So this, in theory, is a better engine, but time will tell, I guess. Here it is, 75 millimeter gun. We managed to clean it up, cut all the welds off that were actually uh, holding it closed. And uh, with a little bit of effort, can't go all the way down, but you can actually see now, it all moves nicely. It won't go all the way down because I was hitting the floor, but um, I spent a lot of time with this. Nick's taken it all to pieces and cleaned all the parts up. Um, and we managed to cut out all the old weld, like I just said, so. Um, she is the first piece of the Jumbo that is actually finished and, uh, other than being painted, finished and ready to be reinstalled. Here we are trying to get this uh, stood out of this uh, Jumbo's uh, bogey. We've managed to take one out of the damaged one, which is Sod's Law. We can't get the one out of the good one. Um, we tried heating it, hitting it, everything so far, so we'll just persevere. Here we have two of the fuel tanks out of the uh, Sherman Jumbo. These fit in the Sponsons, which is basically above the tracks. Both of these have got a bit of rot on the bottom, so what we're doing is we're cutting out the bottoms here and re-welding new ones in. We could have the tanks remade, but they were going to be, um, I think they're about £600 each. The problem with that is they would then no longer be original, whereas we try any re restorations we do, we try to keep them as original as possible. Now the Jumbo has four fuel tanks. It has those two big, big ones in the Sponsons, but it also has two this size, and these sit just behind the engine. Um, as you can see from this one, pretty rotten, it already got holes cut in it, it's pitted all over, pitted on the inside, the outside, not, not safe for us to rebuild and use for, uh, for fuel. So what we've done is we've copied it and taken any parts that we could do, and we've made this one. Obviously it's a petrol vehicle so the fuel tanks have got to be absolutely spot on, and um, although we have pressure tested this with air so far, we're now going to uh, put all the bungs in, fill it up with some fuel, and make sure there isn't actually any leaks whatsoever on it. So Tim, this is one of the fans off the, uh, off the Jumbo. What's, um, what seems to be the problem with it? The problem with it is, is I assume it's been cracked or damaged sometime in the few past. They've done a bit of repairing, as you can see there, but it's a cast pulley. So we've got to tidy this all up and re-weld it, smooth it all back down, and hopefully then it'll all look like a brand new one. It's quite, um, it's quite rough on the inside there. If we, yeah. if we don't repair that, that'll end up cutting the belt. Yeah, and you can actually see where the repair's done on the inside. They've welded all the way around there. Right, and this bit, which is the mounting that it fits on. A few little bits of damage we'll have to obviously um, sort out. We've got all new bearings to fit in it, so as it all uh, runs nice, free and smooth. And there's two of these fitted in the engine bay. The other one is in a little bit better condition than this one. And a bit of an update on, uh, on where we've got to with the actual hull. I think we've already shown you this in the earlier videos, but uh, the welding took a lot of doing there. We've had to do both sides of this. We've also had to weld a lot of the inside, which I'll show you in a second. And all underneath the sponsons here. They've all been replaced or repaired. But when we, um, when we actually get finished with it, we've got to take it outside, roll the whole vehicle over so that we can do the upside while well, the other welds underneath because trying to weld upside down is just not possible. One of the big jobs that we're still waiting to do is replace this piece of armour here. You can see this is where a round has come in and destroyed it basically. And we have another section of, uh, of Sherman tank coming that hopefully when we get it we can cut this out and put in. Down in the bottom down here, if you don't remember from the earlier videos, there was a lot of damaged steel work down here. And this was where the, uh, the shells were, were stored. So what we've done is we've cut all that out and we're in the process of making, uh, making new ones because the steel was that rotten. So uh, that's all been taken out. And then just down here where my foot is, there's a bit of a, bit of a bow where a round has come in and the blasters uh, bow the bottom of the hull out. So what we're going to do now is, uh, is try to level that up a little bit. You can actually see how it's broken at the bottom of the uh, that armour plate there. Now I don't know if you remember uh, in the earlier videos, this big chunk here was missing. We hadn't had a chance to replace it. Um, it was actually, we've cut off here, all the way here, and this section here. This piece of steel alone costs £250. So it gives you an idea of the expense when you're having to replace so many bits with, that we have to do. Now you see on the back there, you see, see the blast mark on the paintwork. That's because the whole of that corner there has been destroyed. And uh, we've now replaced it, you can see the new steel. But you can see how the blast actually brought it up and scarred the, uh, the paintwork. 
We're in the back of the vehicle now. This is where the engine sits and this is where those fuel tanks go. This is what they call the sponson and there's one that side and one the other side. Uh, this is where the radiator goes, this is the shelf and it was destroyed again on this corner. Again where that blast came through, it was bent and buckled it. So we've replaced that. We haven't quite finished yet, we've still got to do the little bit up the top there. Um, but we're nearly there with the engine bay now. now here are the other parts for the, uh, the bogies that we've not quite finished yet. We've stripped them down, taken any usable parts off these. Um, and these are now sitting here ready to be repaired. There's a few bits got to be put on, they've got to be cleaned up. Uh, new bushes put on where necessary and then re-sprayed and reassembled. This is one of the final bogies that we've been putting together. Uh, Mick is here is just uh, cleaning out the threads. Uh, there's actually a skid plate goes on here. So the track rolls along here and skids on that and then over that roller. But it um, just needs the threads cleaning out ready for it to be fitted. Here's one of the biggest parts of the uh, project. This is actually the turret ring. This is why the turret sits and traverses so uh, it's all full of bearings but this was very, very damaged. So what we've done is repaired it, put new bearings in it, and um, we have actually dropped the turret on and it did work. So we're just hoping when we put it back on the main hull and we put the turret on, which will be weighing in at nine tons, that this actually still works. Fingers crossed, if it doesn't, this is a 15,000 pound bit of kit that we will have to, uh, we'll have to find from somewhere else. Here we have some of the bits that we've had to take off. You can see why we're not reusing them. Masses of damage. But we have managed to strip some of these parts for spares. This is some of the steel we've cut out. You can see it's just impossible for some parts to be reused. We have reused everything that we possibly can. But just some parts are so far gone, it's, uh, it just wouldn't make sense. Now it may not look like we've done a great deal of uh, progress on this old girl, but uh, we've done all a lot of the little jobs and it, all these things we have to do before we can actually get on to, uh, to sorting out the bigger, the bigger project. Hopefully next time you tune in you'll see uh, a lot more progress and uh, please like and subscribe. My name's Stuart Garner and it's the Armageddon Channel.